Okay, so I wanted to show you here how to use, how to apply the same map that you use or the same texture that you use for the diffuse channel on your material to apply it to also the bump and the specular. In the bump case, in the bump map case, it will raise and dent the surface when we render based on the values of, of the texture, right? The higher values will go up and then the darker values will sink in. Uh, and then on the specular t uh, values, uh, the same thing will happen, but it will be not raised but uh, shiny. You know, will be the lighter values will be more shiny, and the darker values will be more matte. So it will reflect uh, bounce less light. Okay. So I'm going to just for this demonstration make a simple box. And. Uh, I'm just going to, um, I don't think we need to have too many divisions. So uh, let's do it here, two, two, and two. Uh, if you cannot see them, you can always go to edge faces here on the menu and the last option there. Uh, okay, so UV mapping wise, let's just put a UV map to make sure that everything looks correctly when we apply our our map so it'll go to modifiers UV coordinates and unwrap and I'm going to open the UV editor now and see what's there and uh, as a default the uh, the box will have every single face um, every single side overlap which is great if all the sides are exactly the same but let's say that you have like a box grade or shipping something where one side says this side up and the other side might say this side, uh, this side, you know, have the shipping label or so. So you can then uh, apply different materials to different sides if they're separate, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, this is one of my favorite techniques, not the only one out there. Uh, you can select one side of your box and uh, and I am I what I'm doing here is I am uh, holding the control okay uh, hold on I think I lock things yeah if you used to hit the space bar you might be locking things so be careful with that I just hit it by accident so control key down and then uh, select that and then I'm gonna make a planar projection okay when, when I look at the UV editor, uh, it looks like a line. That, oh, that whole projection I just made, it looks like a single line. It's the red part over there. It needs to look more like this that I'm seeing here. So what you can do is choose any of the three axes here that cast a projection. Think about an actual projector or, you know, or you know, like a movie theater projected on the wall. If the wall is sideways, the movie's not going to show, right? Let's say that the projector is sideways on the wall. Uh, it needs to be right in front and showing it, you know, so that it shows well. So let's click here and then X seems to be fitting well. So I'm just going to turn this off, the projection, to make sure that uh, it's out of there. And I'm just going to, not the rotate tool, but the move tool here. Select the move tool here and move it out. You see? Now you have the, uh, you know, that face over here, you know. Uh, outside you know not, not overlapping with everything else okay let's say that I want to do another side let's uh, do this side let's do it again projection let's look at the planar map and once again it's a line so let's see which axis gives us better view that one does you see y axis gives us a better better layout so let's click this off over here and with the move tool let's select this here okay and what, we're, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna continue doing that for all the sides until I finish when I finish I'm gonna grab all those sides select them like that and pretty much scale them down with the scale tool over here um, that's that's the free form tool which allows you to to scale things down okay so make sure when you finish doing that do it on the put everything inside that uh, darker square over there that's the default texture area and what that does is that every every texture that you put there by default it will show 
on the UVs that you have here. If you have anything like that, like this outside, these two guys are not gonna show properly. Probably uh, might show distorted, you know, it depends on the situation, something else can change, okay? So now once you have all your UVs laid out, all the six sides, you will have, uh, you see these four sets uh, of texture, you will have six sides of that. Uh, let me minimize that window and uh, let's go and apply a material right i'm gonna press m for the material i'm gonna place a standard material i'm gonna go to the diffuse color uh double click and then i'm gonna click here and map over here on this connection on the diffuse attribute that a linen texture that i just got okay so i'm gonna go to bitmap and let me find over here, bump demo, linen texture. That's the one I downloaded, copyright free, royalty free. If you see that uh, nothing happens, two things could be it, that you haven't assigned the material to this ob this object and that you might not show, be showing the texture. So right click with your uh, box still selected, right click on the material and go assign material to selection. You, you see that it kind of changes, okay? Um, so let's see show shaded material in viewport that's the that's the button you want so click on that and now the viewport is showing you that okay and then you'll see that red diagonal line that is showing you that is sh displaying the viewport material over there okay if we render really quick rendering render uh, let's get very very close to it um, right here right here you see that the texture looks nice, you know, so far it looks nice. You know, we haven't completely worked out the UVs, but uh, it looks decent enough to be believable. But we wanna achieve that bumpiness texture. It kind of gives the illusion of the texture on it, but we don't kind of feel, it's, it still looks a little bit flat. Um, so I'm going to um, create a, a light on the scene because bump and specular values are mapped, mapped directly to to the settings on on the lights okay so I'm going to go um, create lights standard lights and directional and I'm just gonna select a directional light I let me hold on let me do that from the distance uh, Let's make it this, this spotlight since we're a little bit more familiar with, um, might be or not, uh, with the spotlight. I wanted to have the target spotlight. Hold on. So create lights. Uh, there, there. Lights, sender lights, uh, target spotlight. That's the one I want. Okay. I'm going to make the target. Oops. Uh, close enough to the scene to the to the object it's kind of behind the object right now which is okay uh, and then I'm gonna go get the move tool and move that top node and I'm going to move this to the side and I want to be kind of like between the light and and you know the light and the surface and the idea is that we get a nice strong highlight so that you can see here when I render next rendering render um you can see the difference okay perfect that's what i want let me close this for a moment and rendering render perfect uh it's okay if that doesn't show it means that the light is on the other side so it's not being affected so let's just move it for for that i'm not confusing you okay so i'm going to show you here um an, a tool on the rendering window that you can use uh it's on the area to render region uh, when you do that, you get you can actually select a smaller part of your viewport to render, not the whole viewport. Especially if you're using Mental Ray, this will be very useful because it's going to speed up rendering. Okay, so when you render, notice that it only updates this one, and we'll do that next. So let's go back to that material that we were working on. So the uh, the idea next is to. Um, map bump and specular and they're right here on the maps section you can click there and you see that the diffuse color is already mapped so i'm going to do what i'm going to do is uh, get on the bump attribute over here i'm going to map over there the same texture that we use so go map bitmap 
linen texture and open okay uh, let's do a quick render again oh, I did close the window did I uh, okay okay there we go perfect um, you see I hope you can see the difference the big difference now the the regular the you know the normal uh, value was this one and you see how flat it looks when compared to this one okay so this is taking all those values the, those dark and light values and bump bumping the darker ones down and and uh, you know uh, sinking down the 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 surface wherever it is darker and raising it up when it's lighter so that's what's going on right now uh, you can edit that over here you can do more or less of the effect if you want so i'm going to render you know you just can lower the, the that or you know make it lower or higher the number the more the higher obviously it's going to show up more um, the next one will be the specular so we're gonna see here on this uh, on the specular you have two attributes specular color and specular level think about it you're not changing the color of the of the specular the specular is that that light highlight that things have when they're shiny you know that like kind of like give a little bit of a highlight over the surface um you know kind of like this you see the architectural material over here has a little highlight over there that's what specular is you know how much light will be showing uh, on the on the surface how shiny let's put it that way shine how shiny or how how matte the object will look so you can um think about it we're not changing the color of the highlight we're going to change how much is affected how much how, how much shine will have so you can see that's how how will the the level of shininess <laughs> will have so you get uh, the specular level not the specular color okay so how you know to which level you're going to make it shiny or mad i hope that helps to remember it uh, so this is go to none and apply exactly the same thing that we did for the diffuse big map linen texture and i'm going to do this here so to see i don't see much of a highlight from the from the light so we might need to change a little bit the light uh, well it is kind of working as, as you can see okay you see that it's a little bit lighter uh, now because we have told the surface to okay well whenever it's really really bright uh, really uh, light the texture make it shine a lot and whatever is really dark make it shine less okay uh, let me just spread out that render regions area so that you can see it I, I think it looks beautiful because it looks a little bit more like um, like it bounces the light in certain areas and certain areas are darker you see that uh, I don't know if you noticed but uh, the darker areas are not bouncing as much light this is great for um, and you, uh, I'm sorry just like the other one you can change the level too if you if you think it's too too bright you can change the level over here you know uh, that way it gets less shiny uh, like a fabric like this will not bounce too much light so uh, that probably will be uh, much lower if it was a plastic texture that uh, a leather you know that will be then a little bit more shiny like this okay so I hope this helps. Uh, you understand how you can map the the uh, the uh, the same diffuse channel, the diffuse map to specular and bump. Okay, to achieve this kind of effect. I think it looks beautiful. Look at compare how how much simpler it looked before. And you know, once we added bump, it started racing up, and the specular kind of what added uh, there the uh, tip of the icing, as they say, right? Uh, keep in mind, I learned from. Uh, a, a former DreamWorks animator, he said uh, one of the things that uh, objects tend to have is like when they're brand new, they are very shiny, no imperfections. Adding specular and bump uh, uh, for, for adding grain to the surface, a surface that has the same color, that adds a little bit of interest uh, into the you know visual interest. Like right now, I'm looking at my computer monitor, and while the frame is completely black. Uh, it does have a little bit of grain on it so you know that it makes me feel that if i touch it it's kind of like a sandpaper you know texture so that adds interest also when an object has been touched worn you know worn out a little bit by use you know for normal use it also tends to have less 
uh, you know, it's a variation of different areas that are more shiny or more matte. You know, one example is uh, we have a piano in the house. So it has three pedals. The pedal that has the uh, sustained, you know, that the, the leaves the echo kind of uh, uh, going on the, when you press the, the keys, uh, that one has been used more. Uh, so it's very shiny because it has been kind of polished by the feet. The other ones look a little bit more more dulled, more matte, and uh, that is kind of something that you can tell. To you know, you can put you put that on an object with just texture, kind of like the history of what has been used and what has not. Okay, uh, just take a closer look at you know different objects you know on your on your work area. You know, they have a keyboard that has a few scratches. You know, they look the same color, but it, the, the bump map will add those scratches on it. The mouse, you know, looks a little bit more shiny on the areas where I um, where I put my hand a lot, you know, things like that. Uh, start paying attention and then you can replicate that with bumps and with specular maps, okay? And uh, that's it. I hope this helps and I look forward to seeing you apply this from now on on your projects in the